Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another session of Brain Scratch Commentaries Does a Movie Thing. <laughs> Continuing our marvelous adventures, we are now going into the second best part of 2008, next to The Dark Knight, Iron Man. <laughs> this is this is a weird set of movies, okay? I picked the DC hero cartoon, you guys picked Marvel, and then what's Ryan pick? Fucking Princess Mononoke. <laughs> <laughs> it was Ryan minding his own business. Anyway, there are multiple ways to get this movie, of course. Uh, you can get on Amazon Instant Video, as always. That's, that's usually a good source of viewing these movies on the cheap, in case you don't ever feel like buying these movies. I am watching the Blu-ray because I love this film. Uh, but with all that said, let's begin. Our movie begins with the Paramount logo. So, are you guys ready to sync up? Yep. 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 On okay. Invisible Zero, everyone, in three, two, one. Oh boy, Paramount. Now they really start to rub in this high-definition version of the logo where it begins with the old-fashioned Paramount, and then, wham! High definition. Now you can see the little yodeling hooligans. Let's make a happy little logo. Happy little logo. <laughs> um, now, uh, John, you, I know you really like the Iron Man movies, but would you say this is your favorite out of the cinematic Marvel? Um, specifically, like, the cinematic universe. I'm not... Um, uh, not counting Avengers? Uh, well, sure, we can count Avengers. Um, if you okay, because I love Avengers, but if we're talking about individual solo films, yes, Iron Man is my absolute favorite. Huh. I always love going back to watching this. That that's interesting because like I like this movie a lot too, but I think when I compare it to some of the others in the cinematic universe, I think I'd probably watch Captain America or um, pr- before I go back to the uh, Winter Man. Soldier's right up there too, though it goes without saying. Okay. Uh, but what's more impressive with Iron Man to me is that you know I I, I was familiar with Iron Man. I knew about him. Never read a comic, never bothered with that animated show that was well way beyond our time anyway. Um, I think he also had like an animated series similar to Spider Man, didn't have nearly as much of a run. But I went to go see it anyway because it was summer of two thousand and eight and I just fell in love with Tony Stark. Well, more accurately, Robert Downey Jr.'s performance as Tony Stark. I love the suit, I love the high gad uh, the gadgetry, the just the overall fun factor of the film was so great and appealing to me. I, it was an instant classic to me. Instant classic. And then 2 came along. <laughs> I defend 2. No, nothing think... happens in that goddamn movie. <laughs> but I don't think it's bad. I enjoyed it. it uh, I, I've, I've only been able to watch it all the way through one time. Uh, mm. So uh, we'll get to I'm that. I'm looking when forward we get to the to revisit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean. Iron Man, the film, just so invigorating to me. And to me, that is a sign of a great movie. Get a non-fan to be interested in your product. Because after this, uh, after this, and sometime after Iron Man 2, I started getting into the Iron Man comics. And I, as I said at the end of the Spider-Man uh, commentary, I'm not as into the Iron Man comic as I am with Batman or Justice League or Superman, but it did make me interested. Which is, you know... I think what Marvel is trying to do with people nowadays is use these movies as a gateway to the comic book world. Or they can replace them entirely. Who knows? Yeah. Of course, it does help that Iron Man isn't your typical superhero in a tight, in a, in a tight spandex suit. He's actually, you know, a guy in a super armor suit, which is something that anyone can get behind almost. It's like most... Uh, Western superheroes and, well, also Japanese superheroes because they're freaking Power Rangers and stuff have this have this kind of look to them that that makes them more palatable to children than adults. It's like adults have this have this sense that uh, there's this age line where they have to stop being interested in stuff that's childish, and I say that in sarcastic air quotes because I don't really believe in that age line at all. <laughs> but uh, Iron Man has. He's he's got he's he's got more of a well when you ignore his out there color scheme he has more of a he he can be he can be considered as less childish. Uh, a lot of his like personal issues are a lot more adult too. 
Like when you yeah. look at the um, when you look at like the uh, at the comics specifically, like I think one of the more famous and kind of <laughs> kind of cringeworthy examples in the older. If all of my problems stuff. stem from being Tony Stark, I'll stop being Tony Stark. <laughs> well, I was gonna, I was going to talk about the alcoholism uh, yeah. <laughs> a plot line, actually. Yeah, the uh, demon in the bottle. I think it was the name of the the arc. Yeah, but you're, I think that may have something to do with it, too. It was the more mature, well, compared to everything else, uh, origin story about Tony Stark was like, you know, there's no dead parents or anything like that. There's no Uncle Ben. It was, you know, Tony Stark. He's, he's a twat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, he's an asshole. Dead too, but Tony Stark's also like 40, so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like you know. In this, they 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 were talking about the cover of Maxim. Now, I've never read Maxim, but I've seen enough of its covers on the magazine rack at the local convenience store to know what kind of magazine it is. Oh, I wonder who the bad guy's gonna be. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, Ted, when I was watching the movie for the first time. It's like I I, I like um, this is Jeff Bridges, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's playing. The, I don't know who. Again, I don't know who. I didn't know who Obadiah Stane was, but I was looking at the lighting, the camera angles. Like, oh, I already know who the bad guy is. <laughs> well, that's yeah. the like, thing about Iron Man is that he was pretty much like a D-list uh, hero before the the movie came out and like pushed him up to being one of Marvel's like biggest top dogs. Like, I don't yeah. think I knew anybody who knew who Iron Man... I didn't know who Iron Man was before this movie came out. So you know, I, I knew the hero name, but that was about it. I knew him as that guy from Marvel vs. Capcom. <laughs> I thought that he wasn't in Marvel vs. Capcom. Yeah, yeah he, was. he was. Oh well. Oh wait, he wasn't in he, War Machine. Was in two instead of Iron Man for some reason. Uh, Marvel. Well, Iron Man made his debut in terms of fighting games in Marvel Superheroes. Uh, that was uh, an arcade game released uh, for the PS1 and Saturn. Um, though I recommend the original arcade version, of course. Uh, and then of course Marvel vs. Capcom, and then it was War Machine in two. And I think they're both in that game, actually. Yeah. Uh, well, War Machine is basically a palace swap of Iron yeah. Man. <laughs> He's standing no, right he there up mi- on the stage. Yep. <laughs> he, 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 he shoots missiles, not, not unibeams. Yeah, that's totally different. Oh, I ah, you were say, I get He's it. He's goofing off. Uh <laughs> 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 You're just watching this, aren't you, John? Like, <laughs> yeah, we all just stop talking. You say something, <laughs> John? Your oven's on fire. That's right. You gonna do something oh. about that? No. Oh, uh, you know, I can I can already see kind of what you see in this movie because you know, uh, you know, with, with with the Batman movies, even uh, the only reason we were interested in Bruce Wayne at the beginning was because we already knew he was going to become Batman. But Tony Stark is already a character that I you know enjoy watching. Yeah, I think but, that's that that's part of the thing is is that I think Tony Stark has uh, the Tony Stark himself. Uh, I was going to say the secret identity, but. Um, as we'll see, that's he not... has no secret identity. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, he has a, a very fleshed out character arc that develops even after he starts using the suit. Uh, whereas mm-hmm. I think this is a thing that happens to a lot of superheroes on both sides of the of the the the, the, uh, the like both publishers do this. Like once they put the costume on, a lot of the character development stops. That that doesn't happen with Iron Man. Like he's still growing as a character even after he be he, he gets the the full version of the suit. So. I enjoy that quite a bit with him. Yeah, it, cause it, it's not like in this case where... Um, no, it's, it's not like in other cases where being the superhero makes the character what that person is or how they get along with their lives. Tony Stark is already a billionaire at this point in time. He is a accomplished scientific genius. But his development begins as soon as he gets a suit. But at the same time, he already had something going for him before he donned the Iron Man costume. You know, it's not like he's the most uninteresting character before getting Spider-Man outfit or before he becomes the Batman. Yeah. You know, I'd like a movie just with Tony Stark, honestly. 
which is what Iron Man three tried to do, and I can comment well, for that. Um... Iron Man three is problematic in some in some instances, uh, but I will say that I think the best scene in that entire movie is when Tony Stark goes to a Home Depot and just buys a whole bunch of crap and storms uh, and storms the bad guy's place and <laughs> and you know takes names. I think that that is an amazing. I love that action scene to death. Okay, does Tony Stark have computer screen windows? Yeah, yeah. that's Jarvis. <laughs> okay. Jarvis um, is always watching. Yeah, in the comics, I think in the 60s, Jarvis was like an actual butler. And I don't know if this was a thing that uh, debuted in the movie or if it debuted in the, the comics, but... No, it was it was in the comics. I, I, I definitely remember it being in the comics that I read. Uh, there was a Jarvis, and it definitely wasn't a butler. Yeah, so the Jarvis is now... It's his, like, it's his house. Also his computer. It's his everything, really. <laughs> Okay, so she went from from being an aggressively uh, not very charitable reporter to sleeping with him. Okay, yeah, that's classic Tony Stark right there. Tony Stark does have a magical penis. Magic? Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, technologically advanced penis. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> and this is why I make the millions, he lied. Yeah, you make the... You make the... the... I make the millions of pennies. Hey, that's that's not bad. That's hundreds of thousands. <laughs> uh, I, I I will say I really like Pepper in this in this movie too because she's got I think just the right amount of sass. Like I, I love the way she delivers the the line. Like sometimes that includes taking out the trash. Um, it's just like like it's not like quite enough it's how... for a Z snap, but it, it's it's getting up there, and I think it's just the right <laughs> level. <laughs> I like what if Paltrow uh, as Pepper Potts. Uh, unfortunately, the last thing I saw of Gwyneth Paltrow, I think, before Iron Man was Shallow How. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie. Uh, no. Uh, she wasn't very flattering in that one. In terms of acting, like, you know. Oh, like but... it wasn't a good performance? No. It just wasn't a good movie, period. Okay. Uh... Uh, I'm trying to, remem- <clears throat> to remember. This is one of the first movies uh, Robert Downey Jr. did after... He came back to being an actor, uh, right? Um, I'm not sure if he did anything before his. Before well, I know, Iron the, Man I know the first movie he return. came when he. I know the first movie he did when he came back was a movie called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is apparently re- very good, but it's not. I, I haven't been able to watch it yet because it's not streaming anywhere. Um, uh, but this is like the first like big blowout, I think. But yeah, this is what blew him up. Yeah. Positively, no, not yeah. negatively. Well, no, he gets blown up a couple of times in the movie. Uh, yeah, it's it's, it's like that thing. one Simpsons joke when they go to California. Uh, what is that again? Look, Robert Downey, they're toy- the movie where Robert Downey Jr. shooting out, out with the police. I don't see any cameras. <laughs> no, no, that was Jack Nicholson. No, I'm pretty sure that was Robert Downey Jr. I, uh, I thought it was Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. Ah, Robert Downey Jr., Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Same thing, right? I wasn't familiar with Robert Downey Jr. though before Iron Man. Maybe I've seen him in one movie in passing, in a cable run. Yeah, I'd heard the name, but that was about it. Yeah. I like the banter between between Tony and Pepper there. <laughs> yeah, they have a. I think they have a good relationship. Before I, I, I like I like them as a romantic couple in the later movies too, but I also think they have a good relationship before that as well. Yeah. So. Although honestly, I'm just I'm I, I, maybe this is just because I watched the finale yesterday, but I'm kind of w- waiting for Tony to say, "Zuli, do the thing." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the be- um well no because 2008 had Iron Man and the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. The one with uh, Edward Norton. Yeah. Uh, Which no one saw was- the later of. <laughs> Is, is, it's it, not I mean, a bad is, is, is movie that a, by any means. Is that the good Hulk movie or the bad Hulk movie? Um, uh, are we talking about the Ang? Because people, for, I've never seen it, but some people really defend the Ang Lee Hulk movie. This is the one that's more generally uh, positively received. Like it, again, it's mm. not the best thing. I don't think it's it's, the best it's meh. It's very meh. Yeah, I, I hear. Meh. I always it's hear actually, there's the. I always classified both of them as the passable Hulk movie and the thematically confused Hulk movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ang Lee being the latter, <laughs> and the Incredible Hulk being the former. Yeah, uh, I, um, if we're going to be doing the whole cinematic universe, which will take forever, eventually we'll have to do Incredible Hulk, which is okay, um, I think. Um, but 
You don't think we should do Ang Lee? I think we should do Ang Lee at some point. Well, I've never seen Ang Lee, so it'd be an experience. Oh. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> Um, but anyway, yeah, uh, that was like you know they. I think they they tried to keep they kept it to a minimum in the in the Incredible Hulk like the connections to Iron Man because I'm sure at that time they weren't sure how like they weren't sure how successful this was going to be and thus how far they'd be able to take the cinematic universe uh, at this point. So it's pretty conservative. Mm. No, like yeah, nowadays now, now everything ties into everything and then there's going to be that one fuck up that makes everything fall to pieces. <laughs> I like how Tony's entire character draw at this point is, I can make anyone like me and pal around with me. Ever. Anyone. It doesn't matter how much of a tight ass they are or how much they hate me. The next cutaway is going to be us having a ball. Okay, now I'm just imagining him being in the cave with all the terrorists and then the, having a rave party afterwards. <laughs> Doing the Macarena. That's how he distracted them long enough to make that Iron Man suit. <laughs> this reality is fucked up. So, is this a thing that uh, changes over the course of the movie? Uh, yeah, about weapons. Yeah, um, th- this is a thing in the in the comics as well, where Stark Industries is a weapon manufacturer, and then um, uh, so this is these are like his missiles, and they're like I think they're called the Jericho. So yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, subtle biblical reference is subtle, um, but anyway, they're like really, really super good missiles, and then. Um, well, you'll, uh, They're missiles that shoot other missiles. Yeah, so you'll see uh, you'll see later on like why uh, why it changes because they're um, well actually you saw it at the beginning of the movie he was being shot at with his own stuff so that's what gets him to start thinking wait killing people is bad. <laughs> <laughs> so now we can decimate cities without the fallout. Excellent. Also, I do not need to see Jeff Bridges shirtless. <laughs> You like it, you know you do. Uh, maybe a little yep. bit. <laughs> oh, so this is the car he was in at the very beginning of the movie. Yeah. Yes. The flashback, I do like that. The, the flashback is only like about ten minutes, so it's not like they, you know, just put up a... It's not Sonic Boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also not entirely inconsequential. Yeah, well, in that's, words, uh, it's that's a, it's a good way to do in medias rest without, um, you know, uh, too much uh, other stuff going on. So what happened here is that those are unfamiliar with the Iron Man mythos is that the the bomb that went off right next to Tony embedded a lot of shrapnel in his chest near the heart area. Uh, so now he has, well, as he's going to find out right now, a magnet that's he's got a the really really inter- long booger coming out of his nose. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a party trick. He has a magnetic contraption keeping the shrapnel in place. That's attached to a car battery. Uh, yeah, because I think like it's a super duper type of shrapnel that will like keep on moving in its way towards the heart, even yeah. after. And it's apparently like really hard to to get out, which is why the ending of Iron Man three kind of pisses me off. But you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> what do they just? Uh, he just take, they they, they just, just at the end of Iron Man three they, they just. It's, uh, it's Tony. Surgically remove it. Yeah, he's just like I don't want to be. I don't want to have to deal with it anymore. And he just gets rid of it, and it's just, yeah. Oh, jeez, I see. In a, in a way, it, it's kind of like treating the arc reactor, which is gonna, which is what he's going to replace this with later in the movie as some sort of penance. Like, uh, is that what they were trying to go for? Like, I think it's like, um, I think what they're trying to go for is is that he's trying to use. His, uh, he, um, he's trying to use like his like his intelligence for a more positive thing. Like I think that and the arc like, reactor was a reminder of that. Yeah, like the arc reactor kind of symbolizes that. Like he he invented the arc reactor. Like they'll talk about this later on. Like he, they have the giant arc reactor that runs the building, the Stark building. Um, yeah. and like they said, that was just like a like a science project to get hippies to stop yelling at us. Um, but you know he did he really did make it because Tony Stark is. You know, this is one thing that you can sort of forget when you look at him because he's uh, he's he, he's so casual most of the time. But Tony Stark is 
uh, one of the smartest people in the Marvel universe for a reason. Um, and so like yeah. it's, it's him uh, using uh, when he he's, he made a mini arc reactor to to keep shrapnel that he built from going into his heart. It's like sort of like it's, it's it is kind of a penance in a way a little bit. Um, so you know and it, and it keeps him alive basically. Uh, so that's why I kind of think a it's a little bit of a cop out that they can just get rid of it like three years later in Iron Man three and also it takes away uh, like a central part of the character. So to be fair though. I always thought, because the the whole having the shrapnel embedded in my chest and being unable to remove it is something that I think stems since Iron Man's origins. Yeah, it's uh... back when it might have been Hang medically. On. Is that Barrett Wallace? No, that's not Barrett Wallace. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it, you know, it's again, you know, it might have been medically possible. It's it, you know, it's one medically of those... impossible in the '60s yeah, compared it's... to what we can do today now. Yeah, again, it's like one of those. Um... Well, I mean, I'm sure they probably couldn't have removed it in the a ca- the cave with the box. Of no, no, no. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> he did what he could. Damn it, Yen Sid. Yeah. So um, again, but it, again, you know, I think it's one of those uh, things where I can accept that plot hole since it adds more to his character. Um, it, a suspension of disbelief thing. I I, I think. You know, I, Yen Sid is a character from the comics, I believe. Uh, he was an Asian man, though. Yeah, um, the, the this whole the the whole terrorist group, the however many rings, I think ten rings. The um, ten rings. They, yes. they they made them uh, Middle Eastern because topical. Uh, uh, yeah. But like they're 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 a whole reference to the Mandarin, which is an Asian, uh, which is like a pretty kind of racist <laughs> Asian caricature in a lot of ways. Uh, so um, that's probably why the character was originally uh, Asian in the comics. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and to be a little more topical by reaching in my ass and pulling something out, Yen Sid spelled backwards is Disney. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, thanks. yeah, for a moment I thought you were talking about that guy from Kingdom Hearts. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tony Stark uh, and Iron Man, Marvel in general, were saved by Disney. Well, Marvel was actually doing okay. Disney just uh, had no before boy Disney bought them out. So they just said screw um, them by Marvel. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's an awful lot easier to buy some than to to make your own. <laughs> uh, that still makes me cringe. What? That that whole line about you know the no uh, we have Marvel for the boys and we have our princesses for the girls. Uh, uh it's yeah, it's you know, it's just a stereotypical uh boy aisle, girl aisle, toy store kind of shenanigans that's I hate that. Yeah, I do too, but you know, it's it's, it's it a, is what it is. It's a thing that exists. Uh now I can never remember this guy's name, the doctor dude. Uh what doctor uh, so... dude? the doctor dude that he's trapped with. Yensit. Oh, Yensit, okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so all you have to do is remember Fantasia. <laughs> No, it's not Jensen. I think it's Jensen. Like Jensen. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was Jensen. Uh, I'm gonna now. You're gonna make me look it up. Damn it. Uh, Iron Man movie. Uh. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. No, it's Jensen, not Jensen. Jensen. Okay. Why? Maybe I did have the wizard. So no, not that guy from Kingdom Hearts. Oh, I really thought it was Disney. <laughs> no, spelled backward, it's Nesne. 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 Uh, Nesne. Off-brand yes. Disney. <laughs> Third world Disney. No, you know those. You know those like really fake-looking movies that try to get sales by looking like Disney movies. That's what that that company is. Well, like like Bollywood stuff. No, not bo- like. Um, yeah, like Anastasia. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I know Anastasia. what you mean. Yeah. 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 No, nah, no. Nah, no, I'm thinking even cheaper that, uh, than that. Like, um, I, 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 I'm uh, probably alone in this, but I thought Don Bluth had like enough of his own tone and identity that it didn't really reek of Disney to me. It was like whether it was good or bad, it always felt like Don Bluth stuff.
this is the point where they're no, he's not making the suit yet. He's making uh, an arc reactor for himself. He's making the arc reactor, yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> the palladium. I'm not sure if that's an actual. No, I think that's a palladium. I think is actually a real, uh, a real thing. Um. Uh, Fortunately, none of the people watching him through the security cameras actually know anything about science, so they don't know what he's doing. <laughs> well, they, to them, but, uh, it just looks like he's working on something, which is good enough for them. Uh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, palladium is a real thing. Uh, you know, just I'll look it up on the on the uh, you know periodic table and all that. I'm pretty sure you'll find it. Yeah. Um, although later the on incense. they do get the uh, yeah. Later on, they do, uh, they do like start wondering like where the hell's our our missile, um, though. So well, they will get a clear video shot of him with the arc reactor in his chest. I think after that point, they raid the hot, the the room and say, "Do what the fuck." Yeah, because like, hey, this doesn't look. You like want me anything. to live long enough to make your missile? I need to. I need to build myself a battery pack first. <laughs> <laughs> D's? What do you mean you guys only have D's? <laughs> no, no, here's a better line. It's a power supply for the missiles. I was testing it on myself first. <laughs> it works. A+. plus. <laughs> we need a power supply for the missiles, and, uh, well, I only have two days left. <laughs> yeah, like, how long would that battery pack keep him alive? Uh, no, the, uh, the, Jensen the was ba- talking something about earlier about a week. The, the car battery. Uh, you mean? Yeah, yeah. The car battery at the Yinsen was saying specifically was powering the electromagnet or the electromagnet for about a week before the barbs start embedding themselves further into his chest. Well, yeah. So like the the actual like magnet probably doesn't need an awful lot of power then if a car battery no, no. can keep it going for that long. That's one hell of a missile. Metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's stupid. We're called the Shagahut. We should have put out the extra money for those HD cameras. I told you. <laughs> I can't see a thing through this minute monitor. We got Jericho missiles. Yeah, well, can those broadcast 1080p? Somebody's locked on to Tony Stark. Oh, no. <laughs> Also, I love how they're playing backgammon with uh, nuts and bolts. I never played backgammon. I don't know what it encompasses. I don't know how to play either. <laughs> oh. See, we're giving this guy a backstory so that when he totally doesn't die, we will totally not feel bad. <laughs> we'll flesh out the story of him. He up with Aunt May. He's his own spinoff movie. Uh, if, if he... Uh, but he won't get an Avenger spot. If he gets a spin-off movie before Black Widow does, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> well, it's Marvel before Black Widow, so. Well, Miss Marvel, I think, is more interesting than, than Black Widow, personally, but, you know, um, I, I still would watch a Black Widow movie. Uh, but for some reason, Marvel just doesn't like that idea for some reason. And Which I said one's for coming some up reason, first again, the Wonder Woman movie or the Miss Marvel? Re- uh, I'm pretty... Oh, well, hold on. Let me check that. It's, uh, the Wonder Woman movie's coming out a bit before Justice League. I think someone corrected me on that on Twitter. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Uh, hold on. I'm looking at that thing you posted right now. Uh, Captain Marvel is due... Um, is due July of 2018. Wonder Woman is due 2016, apparently. Um, no, wait. 2017, I should say. Um, which seems odd, because like, I, I would have imagined that Captain Marvel probably would have been in development longer. No, there's been a Wonder Woman movie in development really for like 30 years. It, but, um, yeah. Yeah, but it's not the same movie, though. So Yeah, I doubt it. That yeah. thing's probably gone through so many rewrites and screen uh, screenplay changes that it's not the same thing anymore. Not to mention that they'd have to write a new thing to tie it into uh, DC stuff, so... Um, I can't imagine, uh, I guess it's just, um, 
they probably are starting production yep. on it an awful lot sooner. I, I guess. I'm Does touched. that fire Jericho missiles? I'm pressing the going bu glowing button, but it's not doing anything. <laughs> but nothing's <laughs> happening. Is this where I hit the contact-sensitive button and out pops a Jericho missile? So he probably had to actually be working on a missile at the same time, so it at least looks like he's doing something. Uh, that's always the impression that I got. Well, he is harnessing Jericho missiles for parts. And materials, but you know when you when you got a Jericho missile opened or dissected to an average person, it looks like you're doing something with it, and that's all you need. Yeah. Although I always got the I, I don't remember this guy's name. He was always just the head terrorist to me. Uh, it, I always knew him as the leader of the Ten Rings. That's all that mattered to me. Yeah, like I always got the idea that he was on to to Stark's shenanigans a little bit more than everyone else. You know, for someone that's um, you know in the same conditions as Tony Stark and helping him build this stuff, he's keeping himself in better shape than Tony Stark. Well, I think he's more used to it because he's been here longer. Is yeah, no, but I'm just talking about like you know personal hygiene stuff like that. You know, Jensen looks like he can. He just came out of a party. You know, Tony Stark looks like he's been in a cave for a week. Yeah, well, uh, Jensen's also been like shaving and stuff. I don't think Tony Stark <laughs> cares. <laughs> Although he's pro he's not all that good at um, at. Uh, Tony Stark's not all that good at keep taking care of himself anyway, so... <laughs> yeah, see, like, he's... See, all you have to do is get some alcohol and tell all these guys and they'll be buddies again. <laughs> Well, sure, let me just shit out one for you, buddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, these things take at least three days. Uh, oh, well, you're already out of the room. Okay. <laughs> Expedited well, shipping or one-day delivery? Do you have enough? Get me three one more One-day delivery? How much money do you have to burn, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Is it weird yeah, that I've had some cases where same-day delivery costs less than one day? Um, maybe? I'm not sure. <laughs> I usually just go it for probably, standard no matter what. It, it probably depends on what shipping service they use for them. Hmm. Yeah, like whether or not they they have one closer by or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. I am Oven Man. No, it doesn't have quite the same ring to it. Get those brownies before they <laughs> burn into crisp. <laughs> okay, so what's the point of having the, the, the glass there in the middle, making it uh, structurally weaker? You have to show off the <laughs> Just cool, so that you can light. show off your cool, glowy light. <laughs> exactly. It's a uh, it's space for the you know power supply. I, I guess because he's he's yeah he's using the he's using the arc reactor in his chest to power the suit. Yeah, but um, I get it more in the uh, for the other armor because it's 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 more form fitting. So you know uh, having it like clo having the arc reactor open exposed makes a little bit more sense to me. But with the big bulky ar armor, it looks like it's covering the entire thing. So having the arc reactor show doesn't make as much sense for me. Yeah, just speak Hungarian, you. Speak Hungarian, what do you know? Where's the pizza? Just keep repeating that ten times over until they get the hint. Then they just come back oh and bring a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the time. Oh dear. They strapped a bomb to the door. <laughs> well, that escalated quickly. In, in retrospect, this is not a very well thought out idea. 
Well, I mean, they had cameras on the entire time. They only had so much time to work on it, especially now given the new tomorrow-ish deadline. They are cornered foxes. Okay. So right now the arm, the Iron Man suit doesn't have a doesn't have any color to it. No, this is how it's, it's always it's, this is how it's always started. I'm pretty sure in the original comics it was all, all gray for a while before he went to the red and yellow one. Uh, yeah, the original Iron Man was all gray. It was really bulky. I think it's 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 kind of a mythology gag. In in a way, uh, where like the first suit he makes is kind of start lo- yeah. looks like this. Um, and I had a bit of a dunce moment, honestly, because when I first saw the trailer for Iron Man, I think it was during the Super Bowl of that year. Uh, you know, we saw this suit in action, and everyone was throwing a hissy fit, and I was throwing, and I was raising eyebrows too. And so I did some research; didn't take very long <laughs> to realize that no, that's that's actually a throwback to the original Iron Man design when his debut. I will say that this first action scene is actually one of the strongest in the movie, I think, uh, with the, the kind of clunkier suit. Because he's kind of like a just a tank. He, like, he goes through everything and, like, don't give no fucks. Yeah. At the same time, though, you're, you get a sense of stakes because it's very experimental. You don't know if it's going to work. I mean, obviously, you know he's going to get out. But, you know, it, it's interesting to see how the suit started, even if it is a unpolished piece of shit. Uh, did you guys expect uh, Yen Sid to make it out? Yen, I no. keep on calling him Yen Sid. Yen Sid. Damn yeah. it, <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you expect Yen Sid to make it out, I should say? Uh, no. no. Nah, Stark to said do the thing, he did the thing, he's done now. Yeah. May he he rest done do the thing, and now he is... Uh, well, he's not dead yet, but... Oh, God. So this is the first suit they showed off for the trailers? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh wow! This is the first thing we saw in the trailer. It, it looks it looks like he's just gonna he, he should just be shouting "None shall pass." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does look like a mini boss of some sort of RPG. Uh, I think I'm thinking more like a beat 'em up actually, kind of like he wouldn't look out of his place <laughs> in the streets of rage. <laughs> yeah, they put him in a baseball stadium. <laughs> well, considering one of the mini bosses in the game that I remember the most is the guy with the jetpack. Uh, yeah, I, but that that's that's conventional. It's not silly. I, I hate that guy. He's one of the most annoying bosses. <laughs> Jump kicks. I never feel... I, I always pick the kid with the roller skates, so I never had a good way to hit him. I I, I don't remember. Pick skate? Yeah, oh. I, I like him. Uh, I have a soft spot for skate. No, no if I'm, if I'm not picking blades. I'm picking axle. But, uh... uh... Don't you judge my my streets of rage cred, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good game. I gotta play it again. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Dumbass. I, I do like that. Even during like this, uh, th- these scenes, they don't. Uh, they, they they throw in the occasional like little uh, gag like that. But, yeah. Yeah. It keeps things from getting too depressing. Like, the, the movie knows it's still pretty early in the movie. There's no need to, for this action scene to be overly dramatic. Well, it needs to be dramatic, but not, like, end yeah, of the movie Yeah, but, dramatic. you know. You know. And I will say, like, it, it's amazing how just a few years can improve the CG. Like, as we just came off of watching Spider-Man, which was 2001, and it is so much better in, in this, which was only, like, six years later. Um, so... Yeah. Yeah, it was the, during that time that the, the early 2000s and late 90s CG transitioned into the better CG that we that we were that uh, that movies are more known for today. Yeah. So yeah. Like, I, I think Iron Man One still holds up pretty uh, pretty well on that department visually. Like it, it's uh, obviously when you, if you compare it to something that's going to come out this year or next year, it, it it's not as good. But I still think it's it's still plenty passable. Uh, so. Um, I, I guess it's something I just appreciate more coming right off of a movie that is uh, a good a good bit older. <laughs> ah, and, they've got guns <laughs> that worked so well for the last horde. Well, they're not gonna. It's not like they have anything else, gentlemen. They have their feet. They could use them to run. 
Well, I, I, I do think that, you know, in, in the right circumstances, the group of ter- terrorists could probably win. Like if they were, yeah, if they weren't, have at, to do is score a lucky shot on the eyes. Yeah, I, they weren't. Uh, they weren't. I think the thing is, is that they weren't. Um, they were kind of freaked out that he he built this thing. I think if they were calmer and more uh, organized, they probably would have been able to to take him down. Which I actually yeah. I, I like I like when there's an, a chance when the uh, bad guys could win because otherwise, like, what's the point of watching? Um, and you see, it's symbolic because he's blowing up his own stuff. <laughs> oh, oh! I, I never noticed that they put a they he put a fan in there to keep himself from overheating. That's actually a really good detail <laughs> that I enjoy. Yeah, it's also a necessary one. Yeah, I guess it's just something yeah. you don't think about an awful lot. Now, this is the biggest point of the movie that bothers me, even though I do love it so much. Oh, uh, what the. Uh... Oh, oh, his escape. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was gonna bring up that it, it it's kind of like he flies like uh, he flies like two thousand feet. He into the fl- air. he goes pretty fucking high in the air and crash lands, and he's perfectly fine. Not only that, hey, he crash a, lands this, in a metal suit. Like, is this another Indiana Jones in the fridge moment? I think it's about, <laughs> you be the you be the more, judge. I think it's more ridiculous than the fridge, actually. Uh, see, look, he. And he's perfectly fine. The fridge was like, oh, it's lead-lined. We can protect ourselves from radiation in here. Okay, At least it was was a dumb explanation, but at least it was an explanation here. Like, yeah. We just sort of expect his body to survive that that shock. Because it's sand and it's soft. Even though landing on sand like that probably would be... Uh, would probably makes it just as hard as concrete. Even landing on water at a certain point, it becomes like landing on concrete. Yeah, yep. anything becomes landing on concrete, no matter if you even landing on distance. concrete becomes landing on concrete. Hell yeah, no, it becomes like super concrete. Oh man, double the concrete, double the paint. It's Tony. <laughs> now who's this? Oh, it's, no, it's Tony Stark. He's, I love how his plan is just walk away from the mountain. <laughs> um. I thought I, you know, I thought I uh, saw him. I saw someone running toward him from his point of view, but no, it was just a weird camera transition that didn't really make a lot of sense. Hey, you see, he's lucky that the good guy helicopters found him, and not the bad guy ones. Unless it's the Ten Rings helicopter. <laughs> And also, Rhodey just happens to be there. I rocket jumped. <sighs> you know, I'm willing to bet they're like, you know, they're, when he tells his story, they're like, uh... Would they would they like what treat him as some hero for for uh, breaking up the the terrorist organization? Oh, whatever, actually, or... you'll see, you'll see in a little bit. Um, they're going to do a press conference scene really soon, which is actually I think one of the better ones in the movie. Uh, so, uh, is this where he has his change of heart? Uh, about. Well, he had a week to think about it. <laughs> Let's see. Should I keep being an asshole, or should I start helping people? Brilliant! I'll do both! (laughs) This is the thing I can really compliment the Marvel Cinematic Universe for. Marvel movies in general, well, not all of them, because I think about Daredevil and the... Well, uh, you can... Yeah, Daredevil. uh, um... Um, Marvel movies know how to have fun. Yes. I think that's what they do. I think that's kind of their place. They know that that's what they do. You know, I'd probably want a cheeseburger first, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's true that what Tony went through was pretty traumatizing. Mm. Whether you're a billionaire or an average Joe. And recovering from that is a plot point. But at the same time, I want an American cheeseburger. I think uh, I think part of it is is that they um, a lot of these characters are the type of people who would use humor as a shield, uh, which is a thing yes, that happens yeah. a lot. Um, uh, Tony Stark, especially. Yeah, because like they'll 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 sort of 
Because it's very, like, um, I'm pretty sure, sh- like, it's... It, it's a way of feeling in control. Yeah, it's also it's also a way of, like, it's also a way of trying to show people that you're okay, even if you're not. Because it's human, mm-hmm. it's human nature, for some stupid reason, it's human nature to not want to reach out for help for some reason. I don't, I don't... To think. not want to look vulnerable. Yeah, that that's probably... Because yeah. if you look vulnerable, someone is going to take advantage of it. Yeah, that's... Or make fun of you. God forbid we can't have that. Yeah, that well, that falls into the taking advantage of it uh, okay. uh, category. Yeah. Yeah, everybody. I love how everybody here is just sort of going with it because he's been through kind of a. <laughs> Although I've always wondered this, like he wants a cheeseburger, they bring him Burger King, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a quick order. Well, I mean, yeah, like yeah. if you're like, uh, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna drive through someplace, at least get him Wendy's, Five Guys. <laughs> Burger King was closer. Oh, man, I hate Burger King. Like, I mean, uh, like, um, like, it's like, you know, if, if I had the choice, I'd go for, you know, the, um, the, uh, you know, uh, something grilled, a real burger as, a, as opposed to a fast food burger. Well, like if I had to, if I had to rank it, I'd go like, uh, if I had to rank my burgers, I'd be like, like actual steakhouse, really good burger. Then probably something that my parents would make on the grill at home. Then probably five guys, then Wendy's. Then McDonald's, then some, then a burger I'd find on the street, and then Burger King. Goddamn, Burger King is awful. <laughs> so yeah, this uh... is this is the okay. So this is the point where Iron Man uh, said, not Iron Man, Tony Stark says that Stark isn't going to be building uh, weapons anymore, and everybody is freaking out about it. Yeah, what does a weapons manufacturer do without selling weapons? Uh, well, they do uh, mention this at the beginning, like when he's talking to the reporter chick, that Stark does other things. Like they they had like some medical thing, well, who's it that they were talking about? Um, so like they do do other stuff, but you know, it's I think he just doesn't want it to be the focus anymore because he he doesn't. Okay, so so is this where Tony Stark decides to take his father's weapons development company and turn it into a, a game company and make holographic arenas for trading card games? You wish. <laughs> <laughs> it, I wish to. The, 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 if he does, the rules better be more comprehensible than Yu-Gi-Oh. Hey, that only applies to the Duelist Kingdom saga. Uh, yeah, any 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 anime where they need to spend like ten minutes explaining the rules to their game after like three seasons... It has issues, dude. <laughs> oh no, I'm not talking about how long white explanations are. I'm talking about how fucking ridiculous card combinations were in the Duelist Kingdom. Saga. I'm gonna re- re- vault my ta- catapult turtle onto the Toon Castle in order to make the moon do. I'll have my Stone Golem attack your field spell card. I didn't stutter. You heard me. <laughs> you see, that makes sense to you because you play uh, you play Yu-Gi-Oh, which hey, <laughs> you play Yu-Gi-Oh. Nerd. <laughs> I say as I watch a movie about. How's it. your Pikmin collection going, Ted? Uh, I only have the the one, uh, the one Pikmin doll. Although when I was actually I, when I went out shopping for Christmas presents, I went into the Toys R Us uh, just out of curiosity, and they had a Pikmin. They had a yellow Pikmin just in a pile. Did you get on your knees and masquerade as a kid? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't pick it up because I, I, I'm running low on cash, but. Um, I, I do think they sell American versions of those. Like it's a Nintendo World Store, so uh, God help me if I ever go uh, go to New York because I'm going to not have any money when I leave. Oh yeah, you won't leave. <laughs> you see, he can. No, we're not. You can tell he's the bad guy because a he's bald and b he smokes. <laughs> not only that, he he smokes cigars while riding segways. Oh. Now, you see, isn't there doesn't Marvel have a thing about smoking now in their comics and stuff? Um I don't know. I'm trying to think. A couple I, I'm pretty sure Wolverine smokes. Um I'm pretty sure. Uh but he's yeah, He smokes in every well, I, X-Men film. I know he smoked. Uh but at, at, at some point Marvel stopped portraying that in their comics. Um I'm pretty sure 
Well, I think Wolverine can keep on doing it because he, like, it, A, it makes him look badass, quote-unquote, and B, like, he, he regenerates so he won't get lung cancer. Uh, I think it is something no. that they've tried to pull away from because, you know, you have to protect the children's even though the average comic book reader is between the ages of 15 and 35, so... Um... <laughs> the hell is with that conceptual sketch paint they had behind Pepper for a second there? Oh yeah, this seems gross. Well, not gross, it's just kind of weird. <laughs> Gross, and for the longest time, I always wondered how they managed to do this. Like, have Gwyneth Paltrow reach into Tony Stark's chest? I mean, yeah. into Downey's chest. Sorry, I, I keep on getting names mixed up today. <laughs> <laughs> also, is this a thing that he has to do a lot? Like, change batteries? I mean... Well, the, the arc reactor that he has in his chest now is made from materials he only could get from, you know, the cave with the box of scraps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so, like, and no, it makes sense why he has to why he has to change it, but, like, does the one he, um, like, will this one eventually run out and he has to make a new one? Like, is this a... Maybe, but it's, it's probably, since he now has the proper materials to make one the way he wants it to, ideally, it probably doesn't have much of a, uh, a downtime. Yeah. So, I would say, uh, no. Okay. It's like a game of operation. You know, I forgot that game existed. Pepper. <laughs> For good reason. Pepper. Let spike. me guess, Louis. Uh, uh, no, I, I can completely explain it, Louis. You know, you, as a kid, was playing this innocent little game of operation, and then you fucked up and got that obnoxious buzzing, which scarred you. Pretty much. I think they actually do sure. have buzzing uh, in this right now, uh, in this scene. Yeah. Oh, God, how do they do this? Like this? Uh, what's going on here is that... Uh, what what uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's ha- putting her hand through is a body double, as in you know like a dummy. Uh huh. Oh, they yeah. do. Uh, there's a. Oh, they did. It's one of those like split shot things they do to to make the like the twins if there's only one actor. No, 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 no. It's a uh, it's an actual dummy. Okay. And there's just a lot of makeup connecting uh, Robert Downey's real neck to the body. Well, it's it's a pretty so good it, dummy it's all because real. it's like breathing. And stuff. Well, it is moving, yeah. They have people underneath uh, Robert right now moving the body. Wow, that's... But it was really good. I mean, for a while, like, it. that's, you know... This is why we enjoy practical effects when done right. Because it looks so fucking convincing. Yeah. Hmm. And that is the Marvel Cinematic... Uh, interpretation of operation, folks. It did do the buzzer at one point, though. I don't think it yeah. was the buzzer, but you know. Okay, this has been Brain Scratch Commentaries. I hope you enjoyed the Operation the movie commentary. <laughs> it was kind of short, but... Yeah, I, I kind of didn't expect that a uh, killer robot sequence in the middle of the film, but kind of makes you wonder what the hell... was weird. Yeah. <laughs> we, never, we never got an origin story for the big glowing red nose. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Also, why does that guy have a wrench in his knee? Why would you ever have that there? <laughs> also, I love the dummy robot. It. I think that's his name, isn't it? Yeah. Dubby? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think one of my favorite lines in the movie is it's like, you do that again, I'm donating you to a grad school. Or something like that. Uh, donating you to uh, Smithsonian, I think, was the line. Yeah. I am explaining why it is super cool for Iron Man to be a pilot. Terrence Howard, I think, is... Yeah, Terrence name. Howard, who doesn't come back for the sequels. No. No. I think it was something about contract or money disputes. Yeah, because... Uh, As it typically is for a lot of people that want to come back in a successful movie franchise. Well, because Terrence Howard is a, is a relatively big um, a relatively big star. Yeah, he's a good actor, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. yeah, so, like, I think they probably weren't going to give him as much as they wanted for uh, being War Machine. Because, uh, like, Marvel will pay... Marvel yeah, does not like paying, paying the actors basically out of all the Avengers, like, I remember there was a big Robert thing for... Event- 
I remember there was a big thing when Avengers came out, though, that Robert Downey Jr. wouldn't do the role unless everybody else got a, pay, a, a boost in pay, though, or something like that. Mm. So, um, you know, uh, first off, good on him, because <laughs> that's... Always the philanthropist. Yeah, billionaire genius playboy philanthropist. <laughs> 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 um, but, yeah, it's... Um, uh, Marvel is, uh, you know, I think it's 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 in their uh, nature to try they're to... They're cheap. Yeah, they're cheap. They, they'll cut costs whenever they can, so... Uh, that'll lead to some actors uh, being replaced. And uh... well, actually, now that I think about it, that's the only real example I can think of of an actor not coming back for the role in the sequel. I can't think of anything else, um, really. No, Terrence Howard being replaced by Don Cheadle is the only example I can think of. Yeah. Why does Tony Stark have all this technology that no one else ever has? He made it himself. Is is the thing. Um, yeah, but he can't sell it. Okay, sure. Oh no, I, I think it's more like he does this stuff for like for for fun, basically. Like he, um, it, it's mostly just kids. Like he made his fort. He already had a fortune because his uh, parents built the company. But like he makes his money selling missiles and crap, so he doesn't need to sell this kind of stuff. This is so. Why doesn't Why doesn't he sell this kind of stuff instead? I think that's what he ends <laughs> like, up doing. Um, like uh, I, 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 I'm trying to remember because like I don't read an awful lot of Iron Man. Uh, so, like, I don't know, like, if there's any plot lines where they, like, go into detail about what Stark Industries actually sells. Um, so, I don't know if they do that in any of the books. Well, it, it, it would make sense yeah. to do so, because, again, yeah, as you brought up, he's, he no longer makes weapons, which was his bread and butter. Yeah. So, is this going to be the origin of War Machine? Uh, no, that's not, War Machine isn't actually in this one. That's a that's an Iron oh. Man two, uh, and yeah, uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. <laughs> and now Tony Stark is building the real Iron Man suit. Yeah, the the, the one you're more familiar. Only halfway with. through like, the movie. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember. Like by the time of yeah, well, I, that that's like each in each iteration of the uh, of the Iron Man suits known as a Mark whatever. So the like the crappy one in the cave is the Mark One, and like this one's the Mark Two. I think by the time like you get to the one that you recognize, and this one it's like Mark Three or Four, and I know like it's like Mark Seven or Eight in the Avengers or something like that. He's always tinkering, yeah, with his suits. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just sort of his, the thing he does, which is why. By, yeah, but but like but like Iron Man Three is like Mark Forty Two, I think. Yeah, Mark Forty or Forty Two is the one he wears for most of that uh, movie. Mm. Um, and then he... But for now, we get to witness the sublimely magnificent Iron Man suit Mark II. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is actually something that you don't see an awful lot in movies. Is like the the like the the hero trying to learn how to use their powers. Uh, like you get like the only other instance I can really <laughs> I can I can really remember something like that is in Spider is in the Spider Man movie actually. Like they don't like he uh, like um like in Captain America he just sort of. Can, after he has the the stuff, he he can just sort of do it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I can't think of really an awful lot of other instances. I, I guess Man of Steel kind of had a section where you learned to fly, but that was more like a "woo, I can fly" kind of uh, scene. So, oh, so he can use the holographics to run simulations on how to work his equipment. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Pepper, don't come in. I'm masturbating. I mean tinkering with my stuff. <laughs> Do you also think that it's a, just more interesting in general because Iron Man is, it, for superheroes anyway, down to earth by means of technology? Um, I think it's, you know, it's always, a, I think, I think it's sort of the Batman kind of effect where you get sort and of the and feeling and and where and I could do this if I had several billion dollars to waste. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that I never really bought when people defend, you know, because I love Batman. I really do. But when people defend why Batman's so significant because he's human, <laughs> that's not Batman, really. Batman and Tony Stark have two very different, have two, have two differences. Uh, Tony Stark makes up for his regular humanity by, by juicing himself up, up with so much hardware that he basically has superpowers. Batman has years and years and years of training. And oodles and, and oodles and oodles of money. Well, they both have oodles yes. of metal, money. <laughs> well, again, yeah, that's but actually, uh, to, 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 oh, to, 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 to tangent for a little bit, one of my favorite comic 
comics ever. Is yeah. is, is uh, where Batman and, and Iron Man are having a money fight, and you just see Spider Man like picking up the change off the ground. <laughs> my 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 point is that Batman fights with his natural abilities, whereas Iron Man augments them to the point where he's basically not using his own his own power. Well, his anymore. his power is power is his brain is the way I is the way I look at it because. He in um because yeah. like, like Bruce like, Wayne like he learned how to like martial arts and stuff but other well, than Bruce that, Wayne like, could build something like an Iron Man suit if that's all, all the, he wanted to he do bought, he buys well yeah. it would t- well you'd have to like stu- you'd have to that, study that is... uh, engineering for a couple of years first I don't well no no because that's the thing Bruce Wayne already is a genius. In chemistry, well, because, engineering, because, all that, but they never really highlight that stuff. in the movies. That's that's kind of why it feels. It, it's mm-hmm. kind of why mm-hmm. it feels kind of tacked on to me because, like, it, they don't really need it. It's just kind of to me for Bruce Wayne. It just kind of feels like, oh, he's he's so 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 smart. Where I feel like it's not necessary an awful lot. Like, I feel like a lot of the forensic stuff that Batman could do, with, uh, like they, that they ever show in like the movies and stuff, is a lot of common sense sort of detective thinking um, yeah they, they, they you get more of his sense of uh, ingenuity in the comics definitely and i'm you know and i and i hope with the the batman v superman movie they are already showing promise because batman is going to have his mech suit from the dark knight returns and that one which you know he built himself to show that batman is also really you know he's a genius in terms of building shit He's not just a super martial artist that wears a bat suit at night. <laughs> but it, the point I was getting at earlier was that, you know, a, a, a unique characteristic people like to bring up about Batman is that he's human. I was like, yeah, he's human, but at the same time, I mean, how many humans in this world, 7 billion people, mind you, I could be wrong, or someone wants to prove me wrong, is an expert martial artist, have a, almost, you know, billions in, in funds, is an expert in a hell of a lot of things, and fights criminals at night yeah that's why when i uh, like when i think of uh, super that's i think a, a marvel thing more of a dc thing is superheroes dealing with kind of human problems like uh like again like this is something you see spider-man dealing with a lot is like paying the bills and having girl troubles and things like that <laughs> yeah the, the, well the thing about them saying that he's human is more to do with he's a regular human who accomplished all this shit but when you think about it it doesn't that just scream more like gary stew than anything <laughs> yeah i didn't say it first <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know it's 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 kind of a big thing to level that kind of accusation at, at such an iconic character yeah. but and it, i understand People will say that, well, it's not so much that he's human, he's also a symbol. Yeah, he's a symbol, but for very unrealistic goals. <laughs> you know, because no matter how much, no, how much, no matter how hard I work, and it's not be, this is not me being a cynic, just being a realist. No matter how hard I work in my life, I will never be a billionaire, an expert martial artist for that matter, and I'll never have the genius intellect of Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. To get back on Iron Man for a moment, I really like how sleek the the I guess this is the Mark II looks. Like the, the, the well, wasn't chrome. there wasn't there some kind of striptease dance with Iron Man at, at one point, like where he's doing a weird dance with his out with his with his arm. Uh, I think you're waist. thinking of a scene in Iron Man two. Uh, no, no, it was Iron uh, Man three. Oh, Iron Man three. Oh, okay, uh, where he's calling the pieces to him while he's dancing. Oh, oh yeah, that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's Iron Man three. I'm pretty sure there's a scene of him dancing drunk in Iron Man 2, though, in the suit. Oh, yeah, yeah there, there, there is that scene, too. But it's not so much of a dance, more of like a drunken head bop. <laughs> uh, this is actually one thing I will say about Iron Man over a lot of the other Marvel Cinematic Universes. I think that the Iron Man movies have the best music. Like, I don't know, there's something really memorable about uh, these score <laughs> The poor kid's ice cream. Um... About these scores, uh, particularly Iron Man 3's music, I love. Um, that I don't get an awful lot in the other uh, Marvel mo- movies. What I want to know is, uh, how how can he fuel this thing with that much thrust power for so long? Uh, arc reactor. It's his repulsor. It's his repulsor technology. Yeah, like it's, it's not. It's they... not like it's not like he's burning fuel. He's shooting energy 
stuff. Yeah. Science. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just good old-fashioned Tony Stark science. Repulsor technology is what they call it. Yeah, that was a bad idea, Tony. Come on, you're smart enough to know that would happen. Jarvis has encountered an hour and he used to shut down. <laughs> I love how he had an anti-icing valve on his suit, though, just in case. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, he would... Uh, th- th- um, he would be crushed to death from the G-Force of that, right? Shut up, John. <laughs> Am I not allowed to question that? Uh, oh, so you well, can you question are, all the DC kind movies, of but... Being, you know, um, <laughs> Of course. <laughs> Science. That's what a fanboy does. What I was never clear on is the suit. It's an actual suit for some shots, right? Or is it all CGI? I think they have a real suit for for some of it. Huh. I, see the press no, wait, of it uh, I, I think it depends, because I remember seeing scenes of him with like uh, in, with like green screen tracky stuff on him at some yeah. point, but I can't. I, I have to imagine that at least for some scenes they have a real suit, probably made out of like um, um, I don't even know what. <laughs> <laughs> Proof that Tony Stark has a heart. Oh man. <laughs> So what's he doing? Uh, Is he geez. interrogating the suit? I think they're trying to figure out how it worked. Nah, bullshit. They're interrogating it. Where were you on the night of the attack? I was on Tony Stark. I could do this all night. Yeah, you can, but you're talking to an inanimate piece of metal. You're an inanimate piece of metal! I know, dude. That's why you're nuts. <laughs> Yeah, okay, you can survive falling through a house. Just put a nice pack on it, he'll be good. He was in the suit. Yeah, but actually, I think being in the suit might have... Also, what the hell is he drinking? Um, it might have actually made him the, the fall worse, because of, like... Um, like, metal isn't actually really that good of, a, like, a padding, so he might have, like, bounced No, it. no, no. It's like Then again, we never really see the innards of the suit, do we? Um, it, It's kind of like... Um, like, in your skull, like, your brain is in your skull, and there's space between your brain and the inside of the skull, which is why yeah. if you shake your, uh, like, why shaking baby syndrome happens is why if you shake the baby, the brain will, like, go, uh, blah, 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 inside the, uh, in the inside of the suit, in the inside of the brain, of uh, the skull, and, like, bounce around and, uh, hurt it. Uh, so, like, if yeah. you, if the same, if there's enough space in the suit, like, that could happen to him, and then it could, I think, it might actually... Uh, like uh, make his liquefy injuries. him. Yeah, <laughs> make his injuries. Now, of of course, this is me bullshit sciencing kind of a thing that you're supposed to go whatever to in a comic book movie. But still, you know that's what we do here. So, I uh yeah. Okay, yeah. So I think it's the Mark Three for most of this movie, or at least the most iconic version of this movie because we're already more than halfway through it. <laughs> <laughs> Also, product placement. One of the one of the cars that survived his cataclysmic jet propulsion experiments. Also, I sense a Stan Lee cameo. Oh, wonderful! Uh, In fact, that's what, this, that's what the ceremony is celebrating. <laughs> it's the seventy uh, fifth annual Stan Lee Cameo Awards. Uh. And now coming, the winner is Stan Lee. <laughs> oh, how does he do it? Every year, that asshole. <laughs> so captivating. Wait. Stan Lee was Hugh Hefner. <laughs> yeah. Now uh, he's Larry I, King in the next movie. I'm trying to r- remember. Like he wasn't invited to his own party. Is the thing going on here, right? 
Well, I'm trying to think back because I, I I skimmed over that news report too. I think it's like they're they're throwing like a Tony Stark charity ball, and Tony Stark isn't there. Oh, hello. Yeah, oh. yeah you just gonna be keeping up with an appearance. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, downgraded to TV show man. <laughs> Agent Coulson. I do like him in the movies, though. Like, um... Well, yeah. I mean, he got all that attention for a reason, lucky. honestly. But I think uh, his his shtick is being the kind of, like, normal dude who's... Yeah. He's, he's kind of a really normal sort of whatever dude in, in, in this sort of wacky mm-hmm. universe. So I think kind of bringing him into a show that downplays most of that was not really the smartest of moves. Um, personally, uh, I don't know. I only watched the first half of the first season of Shield because I, I kind of got uh, <laughs> honestly by the second half. Ted, the only reason why I kept watching was because of Agent Coulson. Yeah. <laughs> I stopped caring about everyone else because I didn't care about anyone else. Uh, I, I I do. I remember I liked like the two like science the two dweeby science people. I forget their names. I, they were entertaining though. Um, do they have some sort of bullshit romance subplot at some point? Uh, if there is, I'm not seeing it. Because yeah. like I, I, I saw like 12 different love triangles happening, and it was just like, I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> we'll, we'll see come in the summer. I'm wondering, though, if Coulson's going to be back in the, in the movies. Uh, I don't know if he will. I, um, I doubt it, too, because... Uh, yeah, because yeah. Avengers 2 is coming out uh, soon. I still oh, gotta catch God, he one. doesn't remember his social security number. <laughs> oh, to, to be fair, I, I'm bad about that, too. I have it written down uh, in a place. I have it written down in case I need it, but... I think I can rem- remember the last four digits, though, which is the most important part. <laughs> For some fucking reason. <laughs> okay, I, 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 okay, I think I do remember the whole thing. It's I, I almost said it out loud, though, which would have been really bad. <laughs> Ted, <laughs> you're about to kill the entire commentary. <laughs> no, I would have just, I would have, no, I would have gone back and, like, muted myself if I had actually done that, because I'm not watching another <laughs> the, the first half of this movie again. Not that it's a bad movie, it's just I don't want to watch it twice in a row. Uh How many uh, movies have you guys seen in the um, th- well, what they're classifying as Phase One? Uh, I've seen universe? I've seen every single one. Um, yeah, it's Iron Man, Hulk, Iron Man Two, um, Thor, Thor, Captain America, then Avengers, and I've seen all of them. Yeah. yeah. Same here. I'm still Avengers. Avengers. Well, Phase Two is Iron Man Three, Thor: Dark World, Winter Soldier, and am I missing anything? Why are they tying that into the Well, yeah, Avengers will well, capture it all. I'm just wondering if I'm missing any other solo individual film. Guardians of the Galaxy, I guess, would count, too. Yeah, they are. Because, one, well, by by means of, uh, like, ending scenes. Because I think the Thor of the Dark World ended with the Collector from Guardians of the Galaxy. So in Avengers, there's a lot of Rocket Rocket. You know, the group. Collector was a prominent character in that movie. I still... Ha- I, I... Thor bores me. <laughs> Maybe. We'll have to wait. I still haven't watched Thor The Dark World, though. Thor, I finally sat down and watched the first film about a month ago when I was going under that cold. And it was a film. It's not bad. Not good. It's not bad, though. You are a Tony Stark, correct? Yes. <laughs> and we get the dramatic music now. The stare down between Obadiah Stane and Tony Stark. <sighs> so this is the plot. His business partner is sneaking stuff at the end of the table. And it ain't high school notes. Which, by the way, was never a thing in my high school. (laughs) 
<laughs> what do you think, right hand? I didn't install my language chip on you yet. You know, when he's just holding the hand up like that, it looks like one of the Equalist gloves from Legend of Korra. No, man, Tony Stark's bummed out that they never made Iron Man hands. <laughs> 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 they made Iron Man, re like, repulsor rays. You know, just a little glowing thing that you strap to your hand, which is kind of cool, but you kind of need the whole glove to make it work. Mega Man got a whole arm. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I mean, you're sitting on a gold mine here, Stark. I don't feel, I don't know why I felt the need to do that. Well, Tony, you've got a superpower armored suit, and you have a bad guy. How do these two things work together? This is where Turn Out Tony gets the idea that his repulsor rays can be used as weapons, which are classified as non lethal. Well, they basically just blast concussive force, so. Mm. It's basically like a really powerful punch in energy form. Yeah, but even punches can kill. Well, yeah. Hell, I mean, give me a newspaper in uh, five hours, and I'm pretty sure I can kill you with that newspaper. On the other hand, it's easier to be non-lethal with them if you aim them right. Mm -hmm. Whereas even if, like, like, say with a gun, you can still be potentially, uh, you can still potentially fatally injure someone even if you aim for a non-vital area. Okay. It's always did to like go the to suit. Work. Love the suit. I do like the look of Iron Man's suit, not yeah. just in the movie, but in the in the comics as well. It's a very cool looking design. It was always one of my favorite moments of this. The movies in particular was him suiting up, and I think my favorite is the suitcase armor in second the second one. <laughs> So basically what Tony Stark is doing is going is flying flying across the ocean first of all flying across the ocean going and breaking up this whole thing. Yeah. Cuz he, uh, he 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 realizes his weapons and product are still out there. Mainly with the 10 rings. I don't think they ever go into whether or not like other third world countries are have access to this his products. But the Ten Rings, I think the, that's what the reporter was talking about specifically, and Tony realized, wait, the Ten Rings, those are the people that helped me captive. And I see they haven't learned their lesson, so now I'm going to give them a personal visit. Yeah. Now that, 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 the, 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 this supposed to be ash, right? It's not snowing in broad daylight? Okay. <laughs> Right in the nick of time. You'll make a superhero yet. <laughs> Buy my toy. And this one. And don't forget <laughs> the dual action figure set. Ah, playing hard to get, are you? Well, I have, have you know that each Iron Man figure comes equipped with my missile set. The kids love that one. Oh, he has a lock-on system. Oh. I love how he has sleepy darts uh, in his... <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a successful test run. <laughs> the products will ship out on the 29th. Merry Xmas Kwanzaa, everybody. <laughs> oh, man, that, that phone is awful. <laughs> Well, I don't... Oh, oh, wait, I remember. He's leaving him to the crowd, which is, like... Actually, a pretty cruel fate in, in, in that part of the world. Uh, yeah. Oh. 
You know, it would probably be really, really difficult to shoot a, a target that size down. Okay, who did that? Who am I gonna punch? Oh, it's you. Oh, it looks cool like you're interested guy, in the Iron Man lawn dart. Get explosions. <laughs> I think that scene was actually used in the video for that song. <laughs> and you get a repulsor ray. So I, I get Iron Man isn't really a hero that has any qualms about killing people. I, I'm guessing, because no, yeah, like Cause you you mentioned you mentioned sleep darts earlier. I always figured no, those were legitimate headshots. He killed those guys. <laughs> well, it's just like I'm imagining like he didn't want to use anything explosive because. Uh, there were civilians right there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, he's a good guy. He's definitely got his heart in the right place, but he's no he's no Batman. He doesn't have a complex about guns. Well, he doesn't... Batman he just doesn't guns. like guns because a gun killed his parents. Ah. The great now, Tony good. Stark is... He, he made peace with the fact that his products were killing the people great good. for the greater good long ago. It's just it's just now his his concept of the greater good has shifted. He's not... Shut it! He's not, he's not any less comfortable with the idea of uh, of uh, killing to, to, to keep people safe. I wonder how good reception is in the Iron Man suit. Why would he be out of breath if he was in the suit and the suit was doing all the work? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess adrenaline, maybe. Yeah. Ah. Uh. How does something like Iron Man appear on a radar in the U in the U.S. military? Uh, a flying man, or is it just like a blip? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know how radars work. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Thanks for the booster shot. <laughs> Now those bullets probably would. Well, hurt. yeah, because the the bullets coming out of a out of a gun are a lot smaller than those coming out of a out of a plane. Yeah, well, these are designed to pierce metal armor specifically because they're designed to shoot down planes. I and went I to doubt Iron Man's suit is any more durable than a plane. I went to um, uh, an air show. Uh, they had like uh, also had like a gun fair sort of thing, and uh, my brother bought. Uh, a replica of a bullet that air fighters shoot out, and that thing is as big as a screwdriver. <laughs> you got a thing on your thing! <laughs> Oh, that could have ended. No, don't worry. His his his, his his spine is fine. His spine is fine. The plane is not. <laughs> okay, so I guess the suit is more durable than a plane. Well, he made it out of super not Tony brain, Stark. Tell you that <laughs> like, actually, now that I think about it, I don't think the suit is made out of anything like. Yeah, because vibranium. All of vibranium in the world is either in to in. Uh, in Captain America's shield or Black Panther's secret stash. 
And adamantium <laughs> doesn't exist in this universe, so it can't be that. No. Uh, it is a throwaway line at the end of this movie. Uh, what is? What, what, they, uh, what the suit's made of. Uh, when uh, Stark's reading the newspaper about how they, they deem it Iron Man, and he, sa- he goes on saying that iron is incorrect. It's more of a, like, a titanium alloy. Oh. The go-to metal for when you want to show that something's made out of something durable. You just have to say it's an alloy and people will think it's fancy. Yes. So, is anyone going to mention that Iron Man activated the parachute for the guy? <laughs> no, 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 I'm only in this movie for ten more minutes. No, I think he's in the later... He's in the later parts. Um... I'm counting down now. <laughs> Ah. Uh. Is it clear that I'm the bad guy yet? <laughs> <laughs> Just missing the cigar. Oh, we had that earlier. Yeah, but not in in a bathrobe. Well, I mean, he doesn't want to not get full the... out mustache twirly yet. <laughs> Uh, boss? What no, I actually, hell? I really like the line coming up here. <laughs> oh, we had a Lucas fate. Bam, 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 yeah, uh, Pepper bam, Potts? Bam, 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 bam. Uh, Pepper, <laughs> uh, good news. You've been promoted to uh, Alfred. You get a pay raise. You are paying me? And now it's obvious. <laughs> well, I mean, it was already obvious, but now it's, like, transparent. Yeah. So why is this guy selling stuff to the terrorists? Um, he's, he's making a money, he's making a profit, essentially, uh, selling weapons to both sides. Um, yeah. I think he wants total control of Stark Industries. Yeah. He was the one that set up the attack. In the beginning of the film. Ah. Uh, okay, so he's an asshole. <laughs> Among other things, yes. I think that's one thing about uh, this movie, uh, uh, is that I don't think that Stain is a particularly fleshed out villain. You know. No, he's not. And, like, I, and, and I, I can give you that, yes. And you know, um... Jeff Bridges tries, but I don't think he uh, the performance is particularly memorable either. I think I think that's actually that, something. Yeah, outside of Loki, all of the Marvel doesn't have very many good villains, villains for their universe. Um, Iron Man specifically, I think. Um, no, I think some of the. Um, I think you know. I, I really like. I think uh, Iron Man. No, not Iron Man. Uh, Winter Soldier. I think did well um, on that front and. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, but Iron Man specifically has really kind of a shit selection to choose from, and people got really upset over uh, how they uh, did the Mandarin in 3, although I don't really get what their problem with it was. Um, I actually thought that was kind of clever, uh, but um, it's just... I, I'm, I'm not a fan of really any of the villains in this. Um, yeah, in this it is of. the weakest point of the Iron Man trilogy. I, would, I definitely agree. The villains are kind of one note, or underdeveloped of the ass. I would also say, like, like power set wise, they're not all that interesting. Like, um, we'll be seeing later on what sort of fight um, we get with him, but it, it's an interesting idea. But especially in two and three, I don't think they have a particularly diverse set of uh, of powers. Well, I, I can give three compliments for trying to be a little more extravagant with it. Well, I, I think everybody has the same power in that one. Like, they all just have extremist powers. Uh, so, like, the the final bad guy doesn't even really have all that yeah. much. But the thing is, I, I just think they didn't want the bad guy to be another guy in a suit. Well, true. They I think they could have given him something else, though. Yeah. Well, they can't use mutants. <laughs> and Spider-Man's <laughs> out of the picture.
So why is um why is Tony Stark need all the the files from the computer again? I, I forget why he needs Pepper to do this and why he can't do it himself. Uh, he needs he wants to pinpoint the exact locations of where his weapons are in other countries so he can destroy them. Yeah, well I know that, but why I I still don't know why he can't do it himself other than because I think it's only an Obadiah Stane's computer. Okay. No, I thought it was Tony Stark's computer. Uh, was where all the 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 stuff was. That's cold. And now, of course, we get the second act argument so that they can kiss and make up for the end of the movie. I'm never a fan of make up sex. No. Is it ever any better? Uh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> um, uh, but um, I'm never a fan of these sorts of things. Like it, they all like you know the oh they have to fight so they can get back together sort of thing. I've never liked in anything. Like I, well, this movie's credit it only lasts like two minutes. Well, true. Because you know she. There she goes. She's picking up the hard drive. So yeah, okay. I, I, it's it's been a while since I watched this. I forgot. I thought that they kept on fighting until after this scene, but um, that was just my mistake. But it, it's the trope in general that you don't like. Oh no, I hate that trope. Like yeah. the oh, we have to make things depressing for the middle of the movie, so they're gonna fight, and then you know they're gonna make up, and it's just. Ugh, I, I just hate the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? I think it's Obadiah Stane calling Ted, making sure that he's not hacking in his computer. No, it was a automated BS thing. <laughs> From Obadiah Stane? Uh, no. Well, maybe. I don't, I don't hope not. <laughs> Like, I always thought this was Tony's computer um, that he was uh, looking in, um, because it, it's a ghost drive, so it's not like the files are on this specific computer. Um, it's just hidden in a hard drive someplace. Uh, well, no, I think what I got from it is that the USB drive had something that could reveal the ghost drive on this computer. Um, I always thought it was just, like, hidden in a hard drive someplace on in the in the building. Um, also, I love how there's a translate feature for voice. <laughs> it's, unfortunately, it's not Google Translate. The Tony Stark that would have been has very good. the cookie jar in Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, oh my god, he's a madman. He must be stopped. <laughs> oh dear. That's timing. I'm not reading your porn, sir. Because, <laughs> like, he, he, he seems pretty okay with the fact that she's sitting at the computer. Well, I mean, he knows something's up, but he's playing yeah, it yeah. pretty cool here. So, like, that's why I, I thought he'd be a little bit more flustered if... He, if she was at his specific laptop, is why I thought that it wasn't his computer. Um, she's hiding the flash drive, specifically. Now, even in a regular business situation, having a suspicious flash key attached to a computer would be a bad thing, because that's one way employees who are up to no good might sneak in a malware program. In some businesses, you'd have to like have every uh, every single device that you use in the workplace um, inspected, or you know, only approved uh, hardware used. Yeah, you, if if the place you were looking at is really paranoid, um, uh, especially. Um, Just play cool pepper. I like the remake of True Grip better. I really like Tron. (laughs) (laughs) 
Tron Legacy was an okay film. You are an interesting and well-developed antagonist. (laughs) (laughs) It was yesterday's... Jeff Bridges is pretty short, actually, now that I think about it. Or is Gwyneth Paltrow just really... Oh, no, wait, those are pretty big heels. Okay, uh, god damn it, now I'm... Now I need to look up how freaking tall Jeff Bridges is. Can't believe... <laughs> what is my life? <laughs> the deepest lore. Yeah, what the hell has my life come to? Uh, um, ba, ba, ba. Jeff Bridges... Oh, he has hair! That's really weird. Uh... Okay, I should have closed that window. Height. Oh, he's 6'1", never mind. Those must just be really, really big heels. <laughs> okay. Um, back to the actual movie. Oh, best mo- line in the movie's coming up. What do you think they meant by the technology doesn't exist? I think it's uh, it is it's something that Tony Stark made himself. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the scientist doesn't know how to replicate what Tony Stark did. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's just some. It's just supposed to show like how um, how far ahead Stark is yeah. than than normal science. Although it is kind, of, it is kind of inconvenient. He has a big glowing button showing through his shirt at all well, times. Well, that's supposed to. Well, that's um, intentional. I, I, I think it's supposed to remind. It's supposed to be a not so subtle reminder that it's always part of him. Um, so, like, no matter like what, like even in the Avengers, it's always showing through like a T-shirt that he's wearing and things like that. Um, Ooh. I kind of wonder what the makeup process for uh, for 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 this scene was. <laughs> A fuckload of pancake powder. Make him veiny. Uh, I'm looking at the shit. I'm looking at the script for this night now. Stark looks veiny as fuck. <laughs> Robert Downey looks as if he didn't get the Iron Man deal. Also, um, arc reactor taker outer machine. Buy yours today. <laughs> You guys ever been tempted to get one of those arc reactor shirts that light up? Wait, the the shirts will re- light up. Also, this looks like a really kind of weird sex scene. Uh, now that I I'm looking at it, <laughs> and then Jeff Bridges went. I want your arc reactor, Tony. And then Jeff Bridges looked deep into uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s eyes. Your chest. And then pulled out. Your chest, uh, Robert. It's so magnificent. <laughs> No, it is a pretty damn impressive piece of hardware. I like the bluey looking one more than the 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 whitey looking one. This uh, this although <laughs> although uh, I guess it might just be the angle because it looked pretty blue like underneath his shirt. I don't know. How does it maintain that magnificent glow? Double A batteries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was your downfall, Tony. Should have gone nine volt. <laughs> who uses nine Should've volt? <laughs> Seriously, who uses nine volt? What would you even need that for? Smoke detectors. Detecting. Sp- oh, his veins are gone. Well, it's short term paralysis. Yeah, but it's not short term. Not- it's a little bit too short term <laughs> if he can get up <laughs> within time for his evil monologue to end. <laughs> Because, like, by short term, I thought it was, like, an hour is more what they were talking about. I was looking at ten minutes. 
Well, like he... I don't know where I pulled that number from, but I just took it and said... I thought like half an hour to an hour. Okay. Well, she at least she at least went for help right away. Well, yeah, she's she's smart. Because like that, that's Tony another Stark. thing about this movie is that nobody makes stupid decisions unless if it's Tony Stark making a stupid decision, which makes sense and this because he's Tony Stark. Yes. <laughs> like a lot of movies are just sort of um, uh, a lot of movies are kind of like built upon the characters not making the smart decision. So I always appreciate it when the characters do the logical thing, or at least attempt to do the logical thing. What I never um, was clear on here in this movie was that, you know, the electromagnet was built in the first place to keep the shrapnel inching closer to Tony's heart. But it, they never said full right that the shrapnel was already in Tony's heart. Yeah. Just close. Yeah. So it's not... It's... When he loses the arc reactor, it's like he lost his heart. Well, no, I, I think it's uh, the. I think I always took this as as a, he's fighting the paralysis at the same time, like it's wearing off, but he still can't really move an awful lot. Like I think that he yeah. probably could survive a couple of like a, a day or two, because like I think what yeah. they were, I, if I remember the conversation he had with the doctor at the beginning of the movie, it's just like there are people who would walk around fine for a week and then drop dead or something like that. So like he can yeah. survive well, without it for a while, but it's just uh, you, you don't want to leave it out for too long. Uh, is the thing. Yeah. Well, remember I- I earlier in the film when Pepper was changing the arc reactor for Tony? And when she accidentally pulled something she didn't mean to pull out? Tony mentioned something about going into cardiac arrest. Well, like, immediately after that. But I never understood th- why. Um, uh, I think it might have been a, it might have been a shock-induced or something. Also, you're, yeah, you're, like, pulling shit, like, out of his organs. So, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah, they kind of have an Iron Man suit now. <laughs> yeah, even in the even in the you know, with his with his real Iron Man suit, the actual villain winds up being his own creation. Uh that's Yeah. I think that oh. again, irony, dramatic crap. <laughs> irony. irony. <laughs> I am Irony Man. (laughs) That fire truck is now on fire itself. Now I fucked up bad. (laughs) Little device thing is going to pick the lock. Well, no, it's just the most reliable lock-picking strategy ever created. <laughs> Blow up the lock. That if Coulson always goes into the same pose whenever he blows a lock off of a door. You say that as if it happens frequently. Like I, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., okay. Yeah. You know, because people like it in Iron Man, okay, I'm just, that's, that's what I'm going to be known for. The agent that blows up doors and turns his back and crosses his arms while doing so. That's a good thing he had that exit point be his uh, fuck up earlier. Otherwise, that would have been a very short climax. <laughs> <laughs> yep, come for the sequel. I look cool <laughs> driving this oh, is car. It? Is that gonna be War no, Machine? No, War Machine ends up. Uh, War Machine is essentially a bulkier Iron Man. Uh, like power wise, like Iron Man uh. is more about like being, I think, agile. Uh, as opposed to yeah, a War okay. Machine, well, more of like a like a powerhouse. Um, well, yeah, War Machine started as you know, another suit for Tony, but the, when the U.S. military got their hands on it, it was outfitted with weapons, a lot of weapons. I see. You thought it'd be bigger, so uh, it's huge. So, Lewis, if you're wondering if Terran Tower will be donning the War Machine outfit, uh, no. But that other that guy will. Would, be Don, that other guy will. That will be Don Cheadle, who looks nothing like Tara Tower. 
Yeah, I always thought that Terrence Howard was a better roadie than Don Cheadle was, uh, too. I like Don Cheadle. Well, though. he's not, not that he's bad by any stretch, but yeah. I, I just... Wait, what, what did they change yeah, actors they, they, for they the changed, role? they changed actors partway through. Um, oh, that's, that always sucks when it happens. Uh, distracting, yes, at first, but by Iron Man 3, I, I like Don Cheadle in the role. Yeah, because, like, I, I'm thinking, like, he, um, the, the Iron Monger, I think, is the, the name of this thing. Like, he kind of reminds me. They never say, they never say his name in the movie. Well, I think that's, that's what his, uh, I think. They call it the Iron Monger because that's what, uh, what, what's his name? The bad guy described their company as being Iron Mongers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. They do say that, but you never get the idea that's supposed to be the name of the suit. Yeah, um... I think that is what it's called, though. It kind of remind, like, in that scene, I think it, 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 it reminded me of the Hulk. I guess uh, probably because there's a scene almost exactly like that with the Hulk in the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you're chasing Black Widow. You're right, you're right. If you, uh, if you... If you buy the Blu-ray version of Iron Man, you can get one of the little bonus features that you get schematics and details over the suits. And <laughs> they go out of their way to justify why Stane has a deeper voice when he's in the suit. It's an intimidation tactic. I guess it works. Because, oh. like, it, yeah, it's a... So, so, uh, so he built a voice modulator. Yeah, the, yes. there's, a, there's a speaker in the, in, the, um, in the Iron Man suit as well, but it... it like, because you can tell, like, it's being projected out of, like, some sort of sound device on the suit. Uh, but, they like, he doesn't alter the his voice in any way. Unibeam! <laughs> <laughs> and that would be why he has a great big light on his chest. Yeah, like, this is a common Iron Man, sort of, like, from what I've seen. Like, in the... in the, I watched the Avengers All Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon... And it happens here. I don't remember if it happens in any of the other Iron Mans, but a common Iron Man thing, from what I've seen, to make action scenes more dramatic is, oh no, he's running out of power, um, because that's dramatic and stuff. Um, well, it's like Spider-Man running out of well, web. It, it, at the very least, it's always like a prolonged thing with Iron Man, as opposed to with Spider-Man. Like he only ever seems to run out of web whenever it would be most dramatically inconvenient for him to. Um, like, there are times when he'll have nearly unlimited web for entire fight scenes, and he'll go through, like, half a fight before running out in other ones. Here, it's just, like, they'll always, almost always set up a fight with Tony. You're only at half power before, like, he starts or something like that. Uh, uh, I see. And it makes sense in this case, because he's using the old uh, arc reactor as opposed to his better one. So, um, it's justified yeah. in this instance as well. The old arc reactor was low on power when he took it out. And he and when when he built it, he said it it could power something for fifteen minutes, uh, something bigger. Even. Yeah, like it could power his heart for fifty lifetimes, but it could power something bigger for fifteen minutes. Yeah, I'm imagining like the, the first suit, but I'm imagining the, the 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 suit he has now is a little bit more energy efficient because. Um, he was able to build it in a in a lab instead of in a cave with yeah. a box of scraps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> built it in his lab with a box of scraps. Totally different. Do as I say. Now if you excuse me, I'm going to go to the movie Crash so that nobody will see. I'm going to not I'm going to not premiere in Iron Man Two. La, 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 la. Okay, so he's counting on the other suit icing up before he does, yeah. huh? So that scene was totally relevant. <laughs> well, that's one way to take care of a bad guy. I'll smoke. Yeah, that, I think it's a again. I I really like uh, these. I really like movies where they um, where not movies, but with these characters where their intelligence is um, emphasized. I really like when they find a clever way to take down the 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 bad guys as opposed to just blowing them up better. Um, it emphasizes that that is their that their their brain is their most valuable asset instead of having 
blow up -y stuff. Whoops. Yeesh, it was terrifying being in the high up. It's like the uh, Tower of Terror times like a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Let's just hope Iron Monger over there doesn't land on anything important. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, just three old ladies, a, an orphanage, and a fire station. Ah, you've seen Gotham too. He survived. <laughs> Oops. What happened to his he, glove? Did he take I, it I, off? I think so. I don't really. He was in the process of taking it off. Oh god, I do not want to imagine what Jeff Bridges is doing like that right now. <laughs> okay, now, no, you want to know what I want somebody to do? I want somebody to take this fight scene, but just with the scenes of them inside the helmets. Um, <laughs> that would be the world's biggest staring contest. Yeah, but it'd be funny. <laughs> Be about as interesting as any lightsaber battle in Attack of the Clones. I would say take off your stupid heels, but there's glass all over the place, so... Yeah, that's dangerous. Break the heel part off. Hehehehe. <laughs> <laughs> My glasses, my glasses, uh, I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> you see, I think that's part of the the advantage to Tony's suit being, like, body size as opposed to... It's pretty clear that the, the monger suit is bigger than he is. Like, he's moving his arms with, like, a joystick, I'm imagining. Um, like, he can just uh, see as opposed to having to have, like, a optical... What's it? Yeah. This thing wouldn't be out of place in the Matrix Revolutions. I've only ever seen the <laughs> first one. I believe it at that. <laughs> well. No, Ted! What? <laughs> Don't watch Reloaded or Revolutions. But if we ever do them for nope. the channel, we're gonna have to do all three, aren't we? Aren't we? <sighs> nope. It's not a weapon, it's a shield. How are you gonna, like, get yourself out of this, like, legally? Like, everybody knows you did it. <laughs> yeah, the, the, he ripped out your targeting system, but I got the feeling you're not even fucking trying, man. Well, he's getting closer as he goes. <laughs> so, like... And y you gotta imagine that that can't be the easiest thing to, to pilot. You know? Mm-hmm. Also, it's oh uh, Tony Stark might not kill people, but Pepper Potts can. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony Stark's done some killing. Well, already. I was I was just joking. Woo! There was a deleted uh, scene here. There was. Yeah. Um, the bolt doesn't immediately kill Obadiah Stane. The fall that? Uh, he falls down, take a uh, dragging Tony with him for a bit, but. They managed to hang on for a bit, and there's a bit of character interaction between Stain and Tony. Like, Tony, like, at the last second, trying to save Stain from falling down. Oh, that old hat, huh? Yeah. Yeah, uh, nothing with value. I think that's a little Yeah, I think more, that's why they ultimately cut this it. This is a little bit more concise, too. Um, yeah. Like, did they say anything interesting, or... I don't remember much, I just know that it happened. Okay. I don't remember what they even... I don't even remember what they were talking about. You're a dick. You're also a dick. <laughs> you should fall down now. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna be... I'm Iron Man. A gold... A gold titanium alloy. 
I I don't know if gold would be well. I guess if you uh, bonded it with titanium, maybe if that's a chemically possible thing. But gold is actually not a very good uh, material for building stuff out of. Like it's a very soft, so it wouldn't be good for like weapons or armor or that sort of thing. Um. Yeah, if there are any scientists in the building who know more about this sort of stuff, uh, please prove me wrong. But you know, I just I, I don't think gold would probably... go watch something else. Yeah, or like use your talents for like I don't know, like something actually useful. <laughs> Philanthropy. It, yeah, or just making money. You know. It took us seven years to think of that. <laughs> now, the the fact that Tony, in just about a minute's time, is going to reveal the fact that he is Iron Man to the public. I think the that was was that ever an issue in a comic? Um, I think like they, they they bring up he's my bodyguard. That's kind of a lame excuse. Yeah. I think that was his uh, that was like the explanation for at least the sixties. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. to well, be this, honest, I think it is the more the character that we have in the Marvel say, Cinematic I'm Universe. Man. I still wonder how they're going to handle Civil so, War. Yeah, because he's he he has an ego. Um, I, uh, to be honest, I think that they're gonna drop the se- secret identity. Yeah, but that was kind of a big part of it in the comics with because it's Spider-Man not needed. And all that. None of the characters have a secret identity. Like everybody. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, like I think the plot reason for why that they're uh why they're fighting isn't as important as the fact that they are fighting. So, and to be honest, the the whole secret identity thing about Civil War, I think, was kind of one of the weaker aspects of it. So I think, like, coming up with a more morally ambiguous thing for them to be on different different sides about would be better uh, than secret identities. So um, I'm interested in seeing how it's going to play out, too. So I guess it's just going to be one of those uh, wait for a trailer and see sort of things. Yeah. I'm interested in just the whole Captain America, Iron Man dichotomy, honestly. Yeah, because, like, they had... The two have the 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 the, the, re, the relationship between the two is, I think, one of the more interesting ones, considering, you know, how drastically different their views on things can get. Yeah, <laughs> you know, people jump up immediately after that announcement as if they were sort of expecting that. And of Call course, it. we get the AC Call it. song. <laughs> Where's my twenty bucks? <laughs> and there you go. Oh yeah. Uh, I think Iron Man and Iron Man Two in particular uh, rejuvenated some interest in ACDC. Uh, he plays an ACDC song in uh, Avengers too, like when he when they're fighting Loki, uh, the the first time yeah. uh, in the not Germany. I think that was actually filmed in, like, San Francisco or something. Not Maybe not that, but it was <laughs> definitely not filmed in Germany. Uh, but uh, he plays some ACDC song when he's riding in uh, for backup, uh, for Captain America's backup. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I do enjoy this movie quite a bit. I just, um, I just, I think I like a lot of the other heroes more. And so uh, that's why I, I, I will tend to go back to Captain America uh, before, in particular, before uh, Iron Man. Oh yeah, but Iron Man's a cool addition to the whole Marvel universe. Uh, I I like him. Uh, I like this. Uh, I like him in this movie in particular because I think because Iron Man was such a I don't want to say a non-entity, but he was a relatively minor hero in the fr- in the Marvel universe before this. But then he blew up and suddenly became one of their biggest sellers. Um, I like that. That is sort of in. Uh, let Marvel try new things, because like, yeah, because like, that's I think you can mm-hmm. partially attribute them going on with something as off the wall as like a Guardians of the Galaxy movie, 
is part of the like you know yeah. if Iron Man can do it anybody can. So yeah, Marvel's Marvel's been consistently more experimental than DC in particular. It's, it's something that people make fun of DC for. <laughs> like with the whole Wonder the world is not ready for a Wonder Woman movie. I don't think the world was ready for an Iron Man movie either, but <laughs> that did just fine. Yeah, and now we're at a point in time where Marvel says, "Here's a talking raccoon. Have at it." Yeah, that that ended up being <laughs> one of the the highest grossing movies of the summer, so um yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, yeah. it should be noted, though, it took a while for Marvel to gain that reputation. Yeah, because Iron you Man know. did well, but uh, the 2000, and, you know, Hulk did all right, but 2008, nobody was talking <laughs> about anything about the Black Knight. Not Black Knight, the Dark Knight. Um, <laughs> the Black Knight with Martin Lawrence? <laughs> wow, I thought the movie was absolutely shit. No, no, 2008. <laughs> you saw, what did you see no, of that no, movie? No, no, John, 2008, people were super hyped about Sonic and the Black Knight. That's what I was talking about. Oh, oh, okay, okay. okay wow. <laughs> so many dashed promises. It, okay, it wasn't but, until <laughs> yeah, but, the you Avengers, know, it, really. It did take, um, you know, I don't think Marvel, like, uh, I think it was up until, like, yeah, that, you know, Marvel, because Thor, again, Thor and Captain America did all right, but they weren't superstars. It wasn't until the Avengers ended up, like, exploding that uh, Marvel, I think, got the, the reputation that it, it did. Uh, you're right about that. Yeah, I'm just yeah, waiting, and, not and, not and to sound like a fanboy, but I'm just, I'm just waiting for the big fuck up to say, okay, yeah. now what are you going um, to do? Because it... as much as I do enjoy the movies, such as Iron Man and the ones that I have seen, you, it's not going to last forever. Something's going to screw up somewhere, so I'm just waiting for that to happen to see what they actually how they react to that. No, I don't. I that's I. Well, I, I hope that, you know, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I do hope that they ended on a good thing after Phase 3, but, you know, I think that might have already happened with Ant-Man. Yeah. Like, because Ant-Man had a absolutely shit production uh, history. Yeah, once they lo- especially after they lost Edgar Wright. Yeah, and now it's not on their list of Phase 3 movies anymore. So I think, to some extent, I think Marvel's so paranoid about that happening that they will cut a movie if they don't think it's going to end up doing well, um, and rather than release something that they don't have faith in um, into theaters. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, which is fair, honestly. As long as they're not too trigger-happy yeah, with it. Yeah, because uh, cause I think it can... Because especially with like Black Panther and Captain Marvel in particular coming up, I think that those are movies that are going to need to be... are going to be risky, no matter what they do, so... Um, yeah. I, but in order to ensure Marvel's success... Well, continuous success with the cinematic universe. Those movies need to be good. Yes. Otherwise, they have to keep reaching into the Iron Man well, or Avengers well, because that's what people want to watch instead of having interest in the uh, other movies, the standalone movies. And for that reason, and that reasoning alone, which I think they're gonna they're gonna get really creative with those films because they have a lot to prove. Yeah, that's why that's why I'm looking forward to things like Doctor Strange, Cumberbatch aside. Damn you, Cumberbatch! Uh, uh, you know, uh, Doc, Doc, Doctor Strange, Black Panther, and Captain Marvel in particular are the ones that I'm really looking. Uh, um, I'm looking into. So, because everybody knows that the Avengers is at least going to be an entertaining movie. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but even they can only entertain us for so long. No, not really. They've been around for like fifty plus years. <laughs> Cinematic Universe. <speaking. laughs> I mean, the moment an Avengers movie doesn't I get the have feeling that they're actually the to amount of pulls it once did is one. when we start rebooting the cinematic universe. Oh, yeah. that uh, uh, yeah. After a matter of... Yeah, but yeah, because you can only, you know... The, the, like, they, the Thanos is yeah. the, the, the guy they built up to be the big bad of the entire series, so what do you do after you beat him? <laughs> uh <laughs> Yeah. Which is kind of weird that I think that, that I think they, I think it's because Spider-Man they don't know what to do now, with Civil because it's just War. like um, scale wise, like he's not really all that important. Like he, he's, but he's one of the, he's one of the things everyone knows of from uh, that arc. I, I don't think he's central to it though. Like Peter Parker was really only a side. Yeah, but tell me, you 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 do don't you don't want to see Spider Man in the Marvel Cinematic? I universe. no, I I do. I I obviously do. Like yeah. like yeah. come on. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I, I do, yeah. but it's just uh, I'm okay with him not being there because he he doesn't have an awful lot to do with most of these characters. So um, yeah. you know his presence isn't missed well, as much. 
As, no. as, but I would love to see. I, I would love to see Spider Man in an Avengers flick. Yeah. Um. Like even if it's just like a short thing, like where you see like a like a kid about to be hit by rubble, and you see like someone on a web swip by and like save them, and then you know, if, if, even if it's yeah. just something short like that. Um, yeah. Nothing, because no one cares. About also, Fantastic I'm, Four. I'm also uh, wondering what they're going to end up doing with the Fantastic Four, because um, do that. I like the Fantastic Four. That's a mo- you know what? That's a movie we're going to need to do because like that's not a very good movie. The 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 2000 whatever. Yeah, there's Fantastic only one Marvel movie, movie I'm particularly looking good, forward but there's to. Deadpool. Points in that that they get the dynamic right. Um, and... Deadpool. <laughs> oh god this is yeah. uh, that's gonna be one where you, you just have to wonder are they gonna get it right uh the the, the <laughs> teaser thingy that they had uh seemed to be uh pretty good like they it, it felt they, they, very they better it had a lot of deadpool type jokes in it um and i think they are gonna go for a hard r rating on that one they need to yeah with Deadpool, they need to. No, I think Deadpool yeah. works either as a hard R or like a complete G. Um, if they, <laughs> <laughs> no, no yeah, like if they try to make him PG thirteen, I think is where he falls apart. But if they like make him like completely kid friendly or completely R rated, is where he works best. And oh, it's the thing that everybody notices the most about this movie, or knows the most about this movie, I should say. This is yeah. what. Uh, this is what sparked the the keeping people till the end of the credits phenomenon that happened. Yeah, the the stingers. Yeah, uh, actually, I remember everyone, when yeah, I first everyone went, waited to the end of the One of the most credits. memorable things about my first uh, for, about my viewing of Man of Steel is is that we were sitting in the. No, but what actually happened was I was with my friend at the time, and we were sitting there waiting for the credits. And one of the film staff actually went up in front of the monitor and he says, you guys know there isn't anything after the end of the credits, right? And then, yeah, like, a whole these, crowd of these, people These movies like, have trained us to stay after the and credits, then just got up in case. <laughs> <laughs> What a waste of time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> okay, but yeah, I, I still really love this movie. It's a, it's a great time. Yeah. Yeah, it really is a good time from beginning to end. I'm had a, I, I enjoyed watching this movie for a majority of it anyway. Because I got a feeling that's yeah, what I did I 85% of the time, just watching the movie. 